It's, uh, it's all rolled into one. It's not just a, a job, it's a lifestyle, and I love flying. To me, flying represents freedom, and uh, it represents what I feel life is all about, is life is to be lived. And when I'm out there spraying, I'm living my life. If I'm putting it on the line, I'm doing it the best I can. I'm, I understand the, the ramifications of doing it wrong. I understand the ramifications of having problems even if it's not my fault, even if you do the best maintenance in the world, that you can die from this job. And it's still important to me because it is my life and it's um, the responsibility I'm willing to accept. To me, the future is uh, because of the, the insurance problems and the liability problems, it doesn't look that good. Uh, I wouldn't recommend anybody else getting into this business, number one, because of the danger, but also it'd be so hard for them to break into it. I, I feel as it's changing, they're going to need crop dusters or area applicators, and we need the, 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 the professionals or the people who want to be that intense on, on becoming a professional. They got to give 100%. You no longer can just give 60% anymore. You have to give it, uh, be very dedicated. I give 110% every day, and I'm very proud of it. I feel I was very fortunate. My father is in the industry, in the um, agricultural industry, and he knew, because of his dealings, knew a lot of the, knew a lot of the pilots. And occasionally, I go with when I was a youngster. I go with him on Saturdays, and uh, I was fortunate to get a ride. And I always kind of liked airplanes anyway, airplanes and helicopters. So I was fortunate to get a ride, and that kind of started it rolling for me. And then, as I got to high school, I. I thought it would be fun to try it again and, and just continued from there. A gentleman named Ron Long helped me to fly. I've, I've known him for years and worked with him for years. And I credit him with giving me all the, um, the flying ability that I have or the knowledge that I have. He's the one that taught me all the ag experience. And the, the ag flying is totally different than, than uh, what an average person might do on, on, the, on the weekends. We, it's a profession. Uh, I have to be constantly aware of what's going on. I am a professional, and, and the people I work with are professionals, and we're trying to do the things the right way, the proper way, is the best of our ability, and, or, and my ability also. And uh, I enjoy the flying. I've always enjoyed flying helicopters, and, and uh, Ron's the one that taught me the, the ag part of it, and I feel fortunate that he taught me because uh, I learned a lot from him. As I'm flying a helicopter, um, it's, I have to be very precise, or as precise as possible, as to how I'm flying it. Uh, making my turns properly, I have to be ca cautious of how I'm doing it, and or be totally aware of what I'm doing, because I can get myself into trouble, and once I get into trouble, it's hard to get out of it. And I have to be constantly aware ahead of time as to what I'm doing. I have to have it all planned out, how I'm going to fly the field, the patterns that I'm going to do are just my, my normal procedure of, of spraying the field. As I'm flying it, uh, you're trying to, to get as a close a spray job as you can or as close to the crop as you can, or, or depending on the crops that we spray, because we'll vary our height depending on, on the susceptibility of the crops to the chemicals also. But as I'm flying it, I have to take all these factors into consideration so that I can do the proper job so I can fly the helicopter properly and do the best job for the grower. So as I make a turn at the beginning of a load, it's heavy, I have to fly it different, I have to think about the wind conditions, how it's gonna react with that heavy load. And as, as I'm spraying and the load diminishes, I have, I have to change my whole flying procedure for the weight of that helicopter. So I'm basically flying it as, as to the feel or how I feel, and that took basically years of experience to get there. Every day is a little bit different, so I have to fly it different every day. The characteristics of the helicopter, 
like I say, you, you, I can spray a field one day and the next day I have to do it totally different. The wind conditions change. The wind conditions may change right in the middle of a pass. There's some areas that we do where you'll start on one side of the field and the wind's going one way and because of a canyon or different circumstances, the wind on the opposite side is going the other way. And the na nature and, and the wind conditions basically dictate what I have to do and, and how I have to fly that helicopter. I'm coming up to an area where there are obstacles. Um, the things that are going through my mind are the, the uh, wind conditions at the time, how the helicopter feels, how I feel at the time. Um, and basically the wind, the wind dictates what I have to do and how I have to fly that. Now as I'm spraying, you're trying to stay basically as low as possible, but you have to give yourself a little cushion. I'm high above the field making the turn. I, I drop it in. Uh, depending on the weight of uh, the helicopter time or the load that you have in there, I, I'm coming down in. I have to judge how fast I'm coming into the field, where I need to start coming in with power with the collective that lifts you up and down. And you're, I'm constantly judging how high I want to be off that ground. I'm by myself. Everything I do uh, can affect the grower, can affect our company, can affect the environment, and can affect uh, the average person. Uh, my responsibility is to do the best job I can to protect myself and other people. Um, to know where that drift is, where the drift's going to go, where the spray's going to go, what material I'm using. And uh, while we're spraying, we're taking a lot of things into consideration, a lot of factors. As my experience through the years, uh, you get to know the ranches like you might know your home. Uh, at night, once you move into a new house, uh, you're not aware of where things are, but as you become accustomed to it, you can walk in, the, in your house in the middle of the night and, and walk free and from all the obstacles. Whereas when I'm flying, uh, as I become familiar with all the ranches, uh, I'm aware of all the obstacles and wires, and uh, that's how I have to fly it because of the obstacles that we do go over and under. And uh, so, scary parts, I've been in fog conditions where I've pushed it a little bit too much and uh, got what's called vertigo and that can be a very serious situation and but because the way I fly and the way um, our industry dictates some of the times we have to fly and I have to fly in conditions that we have to push a little bit but we have to know where the limits are. I have to be a professional now. I mean, it's, it's incredible the responsibility that I have on doing my job and doing it correctly. I, when I'm spraying that field, I'm thinking of the people that are going to eat the produce that I'm spraying. Uh, I'm thinking of my, the safety of myself while I'm spraying the field, and I have to weigh all these factors so that I can be safe, I can, I can do a safe job, and what I'm applying is safe for the people to eat. It's, it's a tremendous responsibility. When I'm in the hot seat, that's what, I, what it is when I'm in that helicopter. People are more concerned with uh, the safety of, of, of what they're eating, the water they're drinking, and uh, of their environment. And myself, being a professional, and I'm spraying pesticides on a, on a crop, I have to make sure that I, I'm concerned about those people also. I can't indiscriminately go out there and just worry about the bugs alone in that field. I have to worry about the days to harvest, about the commodity that I'm spraying and getting to the people's table in a, in a safe manner. And I have to be just as concerned about their safety as almost as much as I'm concerned about my safety in the helicopter. When a farmer needs me, it's, uh, I still have to go to work. If I'm sick, I still have to go to work because he could lose his crop. And if my reactions are, are slow, I have to be aware of, of what I'm feeling that day, that my reactions are, sh are s a little slower, that uh, maybe I have to fly just a little bit higher and pull up a little bit farther away from uh, the obstructions like trees or power lines. And I have to take just a little bit more time because I'm not totally there, but I just can't call the farmer up and say, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sick today, I can't go spray your field because he's going to lose his crop. It one day can make a big difference if he's got a serious problem in his field. And he has a, a lot of money invested in his field. 
I had a transmission seize up while I was ferrying to a field at about 100 feet, and uh, I hit the ground pretty hard and cartwheeled. It was, it took about three seconds before I hit the ground. It happened that quickly, and uh, everything runs through your your mind when something like that happens. Uh, I didn't have, I didn't really think that I was going to die, but I, I was, I was re receiving so much information so quickly. I, was, I did the best I could to try to save the helicopter, but unfortunately with the rotor RPMs bleeding down, when I hit the ground, the, the skids broke off and the helicopter rolled and cartwheeled upside down. As I was very fortunate where I was ferrying, it was on some open ground, and uh, I, I didn't hurt anybody around me also. You have to get over it. Is, um, I had to make decisions because of it. It's something that happened. We do very good maintenance on our equipment, but it is just a machine, and you have to understand that. I have, I have two children and a wife I love dearly, and I have to weigh all those factors and take responsibility for my actions, and that's also why I love the job. Is uh, you're, you're always on uh, a fine line, and, and maybe that's just the kind of person I am on being on that line, but uh, th th there's nothing else I'd rather do. It's a very good feeling in the mornings. When I'm working, I f I'm totally alive. I wake up and the air is cool. It's, uh, it's, it feels crisp. I'm a l feeling just totally at one with myself, and I, I feel that's why I do it. It's, it represents to me living life. You know, my job represents to me how I want to live my life. I do definitely consider it a good living. It's, I feel alive every day. I don't have one day passes me by that I'm bored because I carry my job throughout the rest of my life. Is uh, In my interactions with, with everybody I know, because of how disciplined I have to be in my job in terms of totally is living life to the fullest and being on that line, I live that sort of life when I'm not flying. And I take it with my family and I have, my family's alive because of it.